Here, I'll tell you what, let's I'll do this. Okay, here, no, get on that side. Both of us will lift it up. This is not, okay. And, hey boys and girls, <laughs> welcome to Monroe Live. And you know what? This is the cable of the future. Actually, this is the cable that we're never gonna see again. Drop that thing. Okay, okay, so Corey and I are dirty and almost have a, a hernia. Uh, from picking this thing up and the best news ever was when Ford decided that they were going to go and take the Tesla approach and the second best news ever was when GM followed the lead of Ford. I'm telling you right now the world is a new place. I don't care what anybody says. This is going to be huge for electric electrification and all those clowns that used to write little notes about, well, Sandy Monroe doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Monroe and Associates should stick to engineering and keep the prophesizing to, you know, us, what, what do they call them? Uh, prognosticators. Prognosticators or whatever from, you're all gonna lose. I'm gonna tell you right now, Corey's suggestion, or Corey's uh, phrase. phrase is, Tesla owns the gas stations. There you go. So think about it. Imagine if you were driving an internal combustion engine vehicle and everywhere you went to fill up, you were filling up at a General Motors filling station. That's the equivalent. Think about the revenue that will be generated from all the future charging sessions. And where does that revenue and that profit go? Tesla Motor Company. Absolutely mind blowing. All the other charging infrastructures, all the other charging companies are now at a huge disadvantage. And other OEMs, if you want to play in the United States, you better think about announcing very quickly that you're switching to NACS. What's your thoughts on that, Sandy? Absolutely correct. So here's the one that I want to see happen as soon as possible. Rivian, oh, please, please <laughs> consider uh, dumping, uh, dumping whatever the, uh, the SAE thing and, and going to the... Uh, the North America, uh, North American charger from Tesla. Please do it. I mean, uh, you will make my wife so happy. It won't, I, I mean, it'll be phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal if, you, if, if, if Rivian can go and do that. The other guys, I think that they're gonna have to think about it. I'm sure that it, uh, at, uh, probably for sure at Volkswagen, they're, sl they're slitting their wrists because and, this is the biggest game changer could possibly happen. And this benefits all. This is not just about Tesla. Ford and GM can now make an EV and I would consider buying it. I've said that I drive a large three row SUV, three kids, a dog, I know everyone's heard it. I drive a diesel vehicle and I work at Monroe Associates, it's like sacrilege. But if GM made a, an electric version of a Suburban, I would buy it right now because of this change. Would I have considered it before? Absolutely not, because of your experience with the charging of the Rivian. Yeah. The Rivian is a great vehicle, It is. but if you want to pack any people or, or luggage into something and go really over 300 miles or 800 miles, you're hamstrung. And that is correct. And that's why when Sue and I go for a ride, if it's uh, to go and visit uh, my son in London, we, we take the Tesla. Why? Because you can't count you cannot count on, and you think I'm kidding. This thing is really flipping heavy. Corey and I, you can't believe it. And Sue's supposed to pick something up like this and plug in? What are you kidding me? She doesn't weigh about a buck. I mean, it's at the end of the day, this is going to be, this is going to be the, um, the electric starter, like, uh, like a GM guy. That was, uh, that was Boss Kettering that invented the electric starter. That instantly got rid of uh, the electric car. Overnight, women could push a button and it would start. Men who weren't interested in trying to get their arms broken to start the car with a crank, instantly they were going for GM's electric starter. Yeah, and Sandy and I came to this conclusion about 19 months ago. Yeah, exactly. And we've been preaching it to the people who come and work with Monroe. So if you're out there and you're like, what does Monroe even do? We help our clients predict the future. Right. Really, Sandy yeah. has been nailing it out of the park for the past, I'd say five or six years. Yeah. Your predictions for EVs in 2030 are now, into, now starting to solidify. And then your predictions on charging are starting to solidify because we use data. We actually do it ourselves. We took that 8,000 mile road trip and charged 48 times. 
48 times. I don't know of anybody who's driven 8,000 miles in 11 days. And, and I know a lot of people have taken EV road trips, but we actually experience it ourselves because we, when we advise our clients, whether they're in the finance industry, whether they're an OEM or a tier one, yeah. we make sure that we actually have data to back up what we're saying. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in a plug. I mean, we do have some financial advisors that, uh, that Corey got a letter today, actually that really like what we've told them. And it's, um, you know, it's based on fact. Hey, guess what? These castings are a good idea. Uh, where's the other financial advisor that tore a car apart to make sure that the castings are a good idea? What about those uh, different ways of uh, putting uh, batteries, batteries inside of a tray? What about the tray itself? I mean, at the end of the day, I cannot understand, I can't understand for the life of me how some people put out these articles and people will actually do something with them. They, they actually put somebody else's hard-earned money into something that's stupid and a waste of time. And making decisions with the preponderance of evidence that we gather puts you at a huge advantage. Yeah. So if you ever want some evidence and a lot of context, reach out to us. Yeah. You yeah. can, you can uh, reach us at sales at and yeah. I'll just end the plug yeah. there. Well, that's, that's a plug. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest one other thing, because we do know that there is one, at least one, uh, charging system that works even when it's cold outside or hot outside or just because it works all the time. So I'm going to put out um, a little message and I'm not going to kid you. Um, I mean, we've, we've worked with these guys in the past, and that's ABB. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can take out of spec, what's this? Uh, Kyle, Kyle. Kyle, Kyle. Kyle, Kyle. Take his advice. He's the one who put all of the stuff out. I think that what ABB should do is beg um, Elon Musk to get a licensing agreement so he can produce the, uh, the same, or they can produce his charging system. I think we're gonna need as many as we can get. I mean, the, the elegance. I mean, who, who came up with this? Who came up with this monster? A committee. A committee. And, and, and did they talk to Elon Musk? Absolutely not. And you look at it and you go, you know what? This looks like a racehorse designed, or sorry, this looks like a camel designed to be a racehorse by a committee. That's what this looks like. I always hated this thing. I always thought it looked stupid. Anytime you got to put a handle on a handle, you've got a problem. The elegance associated with the Elon Musk uh, charging system is like out of this world. Out of this world. And by the way, Elon isn't paying us to do this. Only a moron would send us a, a note like that. Uh, this, is, this is as plain as the nose on your face. This is the direction that the United States needs to, uh, to take. And by the way, we're worried about all these other things going on. Chargers, get, we, need, we need to move as a country in a unified way. And that ain't unified. That's just plain old stupid. Uh, I'm sad enough. Go I ahead. think you've summed it up, Sandy. Uh, I, uh, I get emotional. Yeah. Mm. It happens. Anyway. Thanks very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to end uh, because the ladies and gentlemen, are the, they're the, the, the men and women of this country are the ones who are going to be making the decisions on who to vote for and what to, uh, what to say, because I'm sure there's going to be a politician saying, oh, I can't do it, it's a monopoly, or uh, wait a minute, I, I got stock in this other place, or whatever. I don't know how politics works real well. I'm, uh, I'm not a fan, but, uh, but at the end of the day, this, this will unify the country a lot more than, uh, uh, than anything else I can think of. We need to move with the electric, uh, electrification of this country. Let's move in a good direction with a sane, beautiful design versus whatever that is or was. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye. Bye.